This is the OGM weekly call. Open Global Mind is OGM uh, on Thursday, October 10th, 2024. Uh, Hurricane Milton is just slamming into Florida. Uh, uh, two weeks after Hurricane Helen ripped up up the Florida Panhandle and in all the way up to North Carolina, uh, hurting people. And then I was like uh, fake apologizing for for Milton. Uh, and Stacy said, you know, are you sorry about it? And it's funny because my dad, I think I got this from my dad, but I, I will often say I'm sorry about something and people will, well, why? You didn't cause it, but I'm, I'm feeling sorry that they're in the situation. I'm not apologizing for causality. Um, and you so Canadian? I, I must have a Canadian gene somewhere. I, I don't, that, that I know of, like my people didn't go that close. Although my dad was from Milwaukee, so kind of close. There was maybe a near miss thing there. Don't know. Very Canadian. Um, Just apologize. Uh, sorry means like, I'm sorry you feel that way or yeah. sorry it happened. Maybe I am more Canadian than I think. It's a statement of empathy. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. From the communications uh, standpoint, you can choose, you know, um, as opposed to apologizing because it's my fault to just empathize and say, geez, I'm really sorry you feel that way. And many people on the receiving end We'll take it as an apology. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's, so it's okay. It's okay to go with that then. <laughs> good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you're confused about being sorry, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait, you didn't cause it though. Well, maybe. Um, you just say, I feel sad because this is happening. Um, well, don't be so sad. I know. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's no winning. <laughs> human communication. Which, is, which is a principle of reciprocity that we always want to make things kind of even in some way. Hmm. If you well, had, I was, I was you also had a butterfly. Referring, I was also referring to um, the misinformation campaign that's going around about whether or not the weather is being manipulated. Yeah. It's, it's actually pretty a pretty big campaign. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, the Jewish, it's the Jewish space lasers again. That's what mm -hmm. I figure. <laughs> um, if anybody was in Brazil, and they had a butterfly and they held it on their finger a couple of years ago. Well, that could be the cause of the hurricanes currently, um, according to our so, friends in Santa Fe Institute. So blame can be spread really quite widely. We shouldn't go to Brazil. <laughs> All right, then. Um, Samba, come on. Yeah. So we had a we had a very good start of a conversation that was a piece of a conversation we've been having in different ways for for over time in OGM. Uh, and Sam, I don't I don't know if you want to kind of summarize uh, where you think we might be and where we might huh. steer ourselves, or if anyone else would like to. But I'm I'm interested in following this group's interest in the topic of how do we structure, you know. Uh, how do we structure how we deal with each other? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for this, for a summary, I, I feel like we, um, we kind of, um, were laying down or people were sort of expressing their concerns and sort of their guiding principles of how they think about governance. There's, um, you know, there's a pretty wide ranging sometimes, um, off topic or like tangential, I would say some of it, but, um, but I think it was more like just, um, like a check-in around governance. I feel like that's kind of, that's how I think about that last call. Um, there was actually quite a bit of, um, like on topic stuff as well. So, um, but nothing like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say anything like super direction oriented came out of that call it was more i feel like a like yeah like a check-in on governance people sort of expressing their feelings and concerns and ideas around it yeah that's how i think of it but i'm curious to hear if anybody else had something else from that uh same here thanks go ahead mark uh, there you go uh wait you, you unmuted yourself properly but we're not hearing you i'm just waiting for a little silence oh that's why God, I, I saw your lips move. Sorry about that. And let's see here. 
are we I'm not sure about the ground rules of our conversation at the moment. Are we able to post into chat? Yes, we are in regular uh, salon-like conversation mode. Chat is free for all. Uh, pauses are welcome but not needed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we're just in a. I'm I'm facilitating a, a conversation, a regular conversation now. Thank you. Ground rules at the beginning, even posted on Mattermost, um, would be helpful so we know in advance. And we don't step on toes. Um, so last night I went to see a friend um, for first part of a four port course at the Alembic in Berkeley about transformative ritual design. And so we're trying to create a ritual to say COVID is over. We can all relax. Well, I don't believe that. I don't believe COVID is over. Um, but um uh, gosh, was it a good, a good talk. And, you know, there are a lot of things that, I mean, I could write, I'm trying to basically get a wiki for the course because I could write 10 pages on what I heard and what I disagreed with and what I agreed with. Now, government is a ritual. Is it not? It's a habit. It's something that people do over and over and over again. They do it right. They do it wrong. They correct themselves. Now, certainly, play is something that animals do in addition to humans. I'm not sure how far play goes. Play goes, what, all the way down to bacteria? It certainly happens in mammals, dogs, cats. Um, it happens in kids. It happens in parents. It happens in government. Um so is empathy. Um, we're seeing a pointed example in government with no empathy, and government with empathy. Now, where do we put empathy in governance? That's my question, Sam. I don't know. I don't know. I'll be quiet. Mark, good questions. Thank you. Um, and and governance is something we do. It's good as a ritual i like the perspective also of, of the ritual aspects and in some sense rituals are ways of packaging up uh, and making more consistent over time a thing you want to bring to attention or a thing you want to have a group do or something like that but there are lots of interesting and there are lots of puzzling rituals around the world that have <clears throat> strange histories we may never learn about but Stuart, yeah so i have to preface this with um the notion that I, I had um, two trips to the emergency room, a hospital admittance uh, last week, uh, three transfusions. Wow. And, um, I'm taking um, 40 milligrams of um, steroids a day in preparation for a new infusion. So <laughs> what my words <laughs> will be, I'm not sure. But I can tell you one thing. It has removed a lot of inhibition. It has removed a lot of in, inhibition. You know, when I see something and I have a strong sense about it, I just, you know, that's fucking crazy. Shit like that is coming out of my mouth. And it's actually quite wonderful to see because it's a reflection of years of um, study and work. Anyway, what I want to say about this topic is this. Um, and I can't remember if I was copus mentis enough to actually talk about this last week. But I know that in my background and training as a lawyer, people often want to change structure. They want to change structure. There's where they think the solution is. And mm -hmm. it's not in the structure. I hope I represent myself and um, Doug B. very well here. It's about, especially, and Mark, you raised the question of empathy. It's about changing the way we be and changing the way we be with each other. All the fucking legislation and structure that we create is Lawyers Employment, Full Employment Act. That's all it is, okay? It's filled with bullshit words. It's filled with words that are innocuous, reasonable, okay? <laughs> it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. So it's not about as a primary thing in my own mind 
changing structure or creating structure, it's creating being. And that's kind of the critical place to start. And if you ain't starting there, you ain't going any place. Thank you, Stuart. Um, I'm very sorry for your bumpy ride recently. Uh, and again, there I am apologizing. I didn't cause it, but I'm <laughs> empathizing. Sorry. Uh, and, the most, and the most critical thing is, is missing a six week trip to many, many interesting places with Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'll I'll remind everybody that Klaus Magra appears to be on a on a cruise ship on the east coast of Florida trying to dodge Milton. Mm -hmm. A three hour cruise. Never mm -hmm. mind. Uh Sam, please. Yeah, so you know, uh I appreciate that. And and there's there, you know, I've had a lot of conversations that kind of orbit this thing that, that Stu just said, which is you know, it's it's about how we relate to each other. It's about how we think. It's you know, it's that kind of thing, and there's there's some truth to that, but there's also uh, another component, which is like, you know, um, if you live in a food desert or if you have a grocery store where there's chocolate at the where you wait to check out, you know, or you're more likely to get your food at a gas station or you're more likely to buy chocolate or whatever. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of research to suggest that kind of the structure that we find ourselves in dictates a big part of our behavior. And if we don't, um, if we don't actually, you know, this, then this, you know, this shouldn't be a governance call, it should be a, like, um, you know, meditation call or something. But it's like, for me, there is, there, there's, there's a reason to come in and talk about the stru the structure, the, the actual format of governance, how we do it. Um, and so I want to make sure that, you know, that, that, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's why I'm here. I want to talk about how we do, how we actually do it, not how we think about it, but the actual process and, um, and the process has to like, you know, Mark said it has, has to have all the elements, um, like the principles of, of, um, you know, giving people space and empathy. And it, we, you know, we listed good principles there, but, and there's lots to talk about there, but, um, I also want to just say that, like, there's kind of two directions that I see this call going, possibly, I mean, three directions. One is it could be just sort of another um, check-in about governance where everybody gets a chance to sort of just say whatever they want about it. Um, another would be like, we could kind of go down the road of like thinking about sort of creating a book about it or creating some content about it. Um, that's another direction. Another direction is like, let's actually hammer out a system. Let's think about a system. Let's kind of put our heads together and kind of, um, pose ideas and we, you know, we um, draw our concerns or, you know, we, we kind of do like a, a dialectical process around developing an actual pro governance process. And, you know, I mean, I have a place I could start, but I'm really open to anything here. I, I'm, like I said in the past, I'm, I have um, thought about this a lot and I have, you know, drawn some conclusions over time and how I, you know, in, in sort of what makes sense and what doesn't to me. Um, but, and I'm, have traveled down that path quite a way. I'm about probably a week away from launching the beta of a software that embodies some of these principles. But, um, but like I said, I'm not a guy with a solution looking for a problem. I'm a guy with a problem looking for a solution. So, um, and so, um, you know, if anybody has insight about why they don't think this would work and we, they present it and it makes sense, I'll stop in a second and I'll go a different direction. And so that's part of why I'm here. I wanna gather, I wanna bounce things off, off of all of you and hear all of your perspectives um, and see if what I'm thinking makes sense to everybody here. And if not, what do you have that makes more sense? I'm very curious to answer that question. So um, that, that those are kind of the three directions. I think like we should all think about this. Like, do we want just sort of a check-in where we all, to just talk about whatever we feel like about governance? Should we start to create some structure around creating some kind of a principle-based or a, 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 you know, um, um, uh, content? Or should we start to think about actually what a system might actually look like from the foundations? And we could start with the principles of what we would like to have it do and start to like pose models about what could actually meet those criteria. That's my vote. But um, just pose, just putting that out there.
Um, thank you for offering that structure. I think that's useful for our conversation. I, I'll, and, and I'm interested where that where what you just said takes us. I also want to bring into the conversation the very interesting uh, back and forth you've had with Kalia on the mailing list about the IETF and other sorts of things, which I think are really, uh, I think that's a very fruitful kind of path. Uh, and also, I think she mentioned that voting <clears throat> is not in the wise democracy pattern language, that it is not, like, like there's an entire pattern language that Tom Attlee and a bunch of colleagues went and wrote about wise democracy, which we would do well to incorporate or, or absorb or bring into the conversation at least, uh, but that doesn't include mechanisms for voting, which is what we often think about when we think about democracy. It's like, oh, we, if, if only everybody had a vote and that worked perfectly, we would have democracy, uh, may not in fact be, be the right goal and may in some cases be counterproductive because it creates dynamics uh, that are part of what we're seeing in the in the U.S. Uh, political race right now, uh, where uh, anyway, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Um, so let, let's go to the queue. Let's go, Gil. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Good morning, everybody. I'm intrigued, Jerry, by what you just said about wise democracy pattern language. I want to run down that trail. I'm um, uh, I'm perplexed by what Sam shared, I'm more perplexed Sam, when you were done than when you started. I'm not clear. I'm not clear about for the sake of what this conversation is, but I want to go back to what Stuart said. And Stuart, uh, uh, um, <laughs> not sorry, but I feel for you very much. And you know that my wife has been through a similar journey and did the 40 milligrams of steroid per day thing, which is pretty wild territory. So blessings and good luck to you in that. Um, <clears throat> but to your rant on structure and being, um, you know, raise the question to me of, you know, where does, how does being show up? Where does it come from? You talk about change being, how, you know, we don't know how to change being. We do know how to change being. We're, it's a mystery we've lived in for decades. Ritual is a part of that. Um, I did a keynote at Climate Week in New York a couple of weeks ago. That's why I wasn't here Um back then and uh was the, the the topic was bringing nature onto the board of directors and in the course of my research and development of the talk um i i found myself i don't know discovering i don't know what's the word we talk a lot about practices you know like what would be the legal mechanisms for putting nature on the board what would be the methodologies and so forth but if you look if we look to traditional indigenous cultures over tens of thousands of years where nature is <clears throat> in the governance process of cultural processes and groups, it's not practices and mechanisms, it's ways of being. Uh, and the ways of being and the practices interact with each other. One generates and supports the other. So the, the, the assumption that I've heard in some of the words this morning already that it's like this or that is a reflection of the problem of how we think as Western human beings, dichotomizing and marginalizing and, you know, cutting everything up into little boxes and pieces. Um, which leaves me still with the question of how do cultures and norms and values and ways of being change? And it's a mystery, but we know it also, we also know it happens. We see that values shift. We see that norms in society shift. Uh, some of this happens very slowly over many generations or eons. Some of it happens quickly in our lifetimes. Um, we're obviously in a uh, in a vast struggle around a lot of that stuff now, um, uh, where we are not only facing a competition between empathy and not empathy, uh, but a competition a competition between empathy and cruelty, which I find just baffles me every day. I don't understand in my being, uh, I understand anger, I understand rage, I understand all kinds of, you know, fierce emotions. Uh, the pleasure in cruelty is a real mystery to me. And it seems to be out there among us these days. So that's not where I expected to go, but that's where I went, I'm done. Probably help if I unmuted. Um, thanks, Gil. Uh, Stacy, please. Yeah. I also wanted to go back to what Stuart was saying. Um, because I think he's right. It's it's not the structure, it's the people. And what I wanted to say is that 
I think we've seen that things work better when decisions are left locally, but I think that it's important to recognize that there needs to be some outside neutral arbiter to make sure that the people on the ground making decisions that have these human traits that are not the best, that there's something on the outside that can be looked to, to, to intervene when those things happen, because they're gonna happen no matter what the structure is. So when I think of government and I think of the federal government, I don't think, oh, we gotta change the whole system. It sucks, get rid of government. I think of the federal government as being there to protect civil rights, let's say. Now, does there need to be changes? Yes, because it's messed up. I always think of the need for a third, perhaps, bridge that needs to incorporate people that understand this new way of being to behave between a changing system, between local and central and centralized. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. But even when I, you know, just to use an example of my imagining, because it's hard to jump into a conversation like this and still say, base, you know, stay basic. Even the way laws are created or, you know, and the language that goes into that. Why don't we have regular people sitting and negotiating with people, you know, okay, so your state needs this and you guys need this. You know, why don't we have people that are trained to come up with good legislation that aren't there to win for their side, have them create what it is and then go and present it like normal people. I mean, Stuart knows better than anybody, the legalese that's used in things, it's ridiculous. A regular person can't go to the courts and, you know, like fend for themselves. I mean, I don't want to get on a rant, but what I want to say is we do have a structure. It's pretty good compared to what I understand about any other system that's ever been tried. The whole idea of trying to blow everything up and start from scratch seems absolutely crazy to me because in the end, it comes down to the people. We're flawed. We're always going to be flawed. That's just, you know, for better or worse. But if we can find a way to work in groups and work together and have, yeah, I can't even, obviously I don't have all the answers, but what I do want to say is there has to be some sort of wise counsel if we want to talk in terms of ritual and tradition a wise balanced council that represents different interests that can look at things in a more mathematical way, making sure that things are balanced and logical. And I'll stop there. <laughs> Stacy op opened up many, many horizons there, including the possibility of AIs being the balancing entity that uh, does the thing you just said. Uh, but I'm I'm interested Helping. in oh, Sam. AI can only help. I just want to say AI is just the tool to help. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Will you take a moment and introduce? Uh... Yeah. So this is uh, Valkyrie, my daughter. We call her Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Ray. And uh, yeah, so she's uh, hanging out, I guess. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Ray Ray. Really appreciate it. Um, and Stacy, you were you were th through? I was through, but I just wanted to emphasize the part that the AI is just the tool to, to check what we're saying. So if a group of us say, we think this is the answer, but we're arguing, then we can turn to the AI and the AI can tell us which one of us is most right. <laughs> So the, so the AI can be the arbiter, but we make the decisions. I want to be really clear on that. Well, you've just opened a large can of worms. Um, why, Judy, I muted you when your phone rang, but you're back from your phone call. So uh, if you want to jump in, uh, but you'll have to unmute yourself. Thanks. 
Well, as I said in the chat, I think governance is a really loaded word because it's very complicated and means different things to different people. And so we might want to start by parsing out some of those different dimensions. You know, is it ruling? Is it oversight? Is it guidance? Is it counsel? It's all of those, but it means different things to different organizations. And governance doesn't usually have the power to enforce. So it, it isn't formal, but it is formal if it creates rules that are enforceable by somebody else. So it seems to me that we could spend quite a lot of time on governance. And if we're going to dive in deeply on that topic, we might want to devote some of the weeks where we're diving deeply on topics into different dimensions of it because it's quite complex. And governance at the national or international level is very different and maybe even specious. Uh, but it's certainly different at the local level or community level and things like that. So I just wanted to comment on the difficulty of trying to get specific about a very broad topic with a lot of dimensions. Um, thanks, Judy. And in the same spirit, I want to put two words into the conversation that okay, we talked right. about before. Uh, Sam, you're not muted. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Um, I just want to put two words in the conversation we've talked about before, but I think are relevant here. Uh, one of them is uh, resacralization, uh, which is a, a word I happen to really like. And I, I don't mean everybody needs to join an official religion. I mean, back to the beginning of what Stuart was saying, which is we need to shift how we be with one another and how we see one another and how we, uh, what we think the other is, uh, what, what we think we are in relation to one another. I think that's really, uh, really important. And then the the social contract I put in because uh, one of my amateur beliefs about the current situation is that the social contract is in many places, in many ways broken. And the social contract is the, the thing that in part often gets us harnessed to or entrained to things like Magna Carta's constitutions, uh, other kinds of agreements, you know, employment contracts, all those kinds of things. But also the the larger employment, uh, the the larger notion of how we live, live our lives and what we aim for, the goals we aim for, those are all kind of baked into the social contract in different ways. And the social contract has been failing us in many ways. And I think that many of the protests around the world are attempts to write the social contract uh, by forcibly changing the written documents rather than shifting how we see each other. Uh, but then it's, uh, we have shifted how we see one another substantially over history, like a lot. And the, the study of that is particularly of interest to me as well. It's like, how did, how did we wind up seeing one another uh, in, the, in the ways we do now is uh, important as part of this uh, topic, I think. Uh, Mark, please. Have you stopped? Um, here's a book, Undoing the Silence, Six Tools for Social Change Writing. I don't think we can't have an impact. I think we must. Now, Stuart, as you know, That's one eighth <laughs> of most deadly drugs on the planet, not including chemo. Chemo ages you 10 years. Poison. Poison. Poison you survive from. You go through a transformation. They kill you down to 10%. Then they bring you back. Now, that's transformative. I don't fear death no more because I've been there. It's not good. I have empathy for Stuart. Stuart, fuck cancer. <laughs> Be strong. You can go through this. That's painful. Painful as hell. God bless your hat, Stuart. God bless your hat. I'm done. Thanks, Mark. Stuart, please. 
Thank you, Mark. Yeah, it could be a subway series this year. Um, Kevin, good to see you. Um, alive and standing. Um, if you hear from my friends, uh, David Isaacs and Juanita Brown, the founders of um, oh, World God. Cafe. Pardon? Royal, World yeah. Cafe. Royal Cafe. They're in, they relocated to Bernardsville not that long ago. Burnsville, yeah. Burnsville, yeah. And so I passed on your your name as a activist person to be in touch with at, at, at this point in time. Okay. Thanks. Um, so a number of reflections. Um, uh, Sam, I, I in no way, shape, or form meant to say that um, being um, is incompatible with um, doing. And so they're both essential. They're both essential pieces. I thank you to uh, um, my friend Angelus Arian for that in terms of being open to influence when we listen. So thank you for reminding me that it's it's it, it I think as though it it raises the, the the distinction of being and doing, and I think the being comes first before the um, doing as a um, critical piece. Um, Fritjof Kapra wrote a wonderful book called The Ecology of Law, um, which talks about how law is a reflection of, you know, protecting the king's property as opposed to um, protecting the environment or having anything to do with um, environment. There, there's a, a great statement from the Zen calendar on my desk. Muddy water is best cleared by leaving it alone. <laughs> and many of us are kind of flummoxed by this whole conversation a little bit. And so, you know, the leap to solutions is perhaps not as um, critical as wise action. Um, Pete, thanks for sending that reference in um, uh, on the uh, uh, OMG list serv um, in terms of um, the law and what's behind it. And um, it really is terrible what we have written. <laughs> it, 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 it really is when you dig into it and you get into the systemic nature of it. Um, I read a, view, a review this morning of a new film. Um, <clears throat> it's about Donald Trump and Roy Cohn and their relationship. And it's about how Trump got so fucking mean and nasty. Um, and it really is uh, at the at the bottom of it. Um, I don't know about turning to AI for answers, Stacy. <laughs> I didn't I saw... say for answers. I said arbitration. <laughs> well, arbitration is our legal decisions, okay? Versus mediation, which is a structured conversation. Very, 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 very different processes, okay? Um, in the book that I'm working on, I actually talk about the need for, you know, um, pan-global new set of uh, commandments, um, almost like secular religion that we all choose to live by as planetary citizens, um, as, a, as a critical piece. Um, and I think that's... Uh, and Mark, I appreciate your perspective on on chemicals and poisons, and you know, big pharma becoming one of the greatest drug pushers um, on Earth at this point in time. Um, and I, it's funny, I'm having a, a conversation with my oncologist a little bit today, and that's just the um, just just the the tack that um, I want to take in terms of exploring, but also. Um, the notion of really forming a partnership. My late wife lived, my late wife in, in 91 was told she had three months to live with stage four metastasized breast cancer. 91. She died in 2015. Um, all by force of will um, and intention and the words that her oncologist gave her at the beginning get hugged, get lots of hugs, 
get lots and lots and lots of hugs. And I've been working on developing that kind of relationship with my oncologist because of some cultural things. Um, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, when you're working cross-culturally and, and someone is essentially a science, a scientist, and, and you've got an oncologist, hematologist, and you've got to bring out their humanity so that you can truly partner with someone because that's where the magic um, might happen. Anyway, thanks for listening, folks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stuart. Dave. Uh, yeah, thanks. I said, I've been trying to kind of learn myself how to think into living systems as a, as a model. And I do find it's like a different model. And I think uh, in my experience, my approach to governance has been very engineering. Um, and, you know, like from having a public policy degree and, and I, you know, you think of the, the units of government and how you manipulate the individual units of government. And you know that there's lobbying and things like that. But but I was thinking, I was trying, I had never really thought like here I am sitting in Berkeley and how many layers of governance there are that touch on my land, my property, my house, my life, you know. I mean, from the utility district to the city, to the county, to the state, to you know the the business my wife works with to the you know they're they're all layers of governance and they're intertwined right and so there's like not not like you can make a change to voting Sam at one level and boom dramatic change happens because it's going to be filtered through all this other stuff um, and I I was trying to you know like one of the examples I stuck in the chat was there's like eighteen thousand police forces in the United States um, and. The, and they don't work together, right? I mean, they're often in competition, you know, they're, they're trying to steal resources from each other. So I kind of feel like they're probably better. It's probably better to think of them as like, you know, competing systems that are trying to like, you know, suck energy from each other or, you know, and anyway, so there's, there's some other model in there that, um, that, uh, that, that, we, that would help us, I think, if, to actually make progress. So they're probably particularizing the problem. It's like chopping up the frog, you know, you don't see how it jumps anymore. Um, and, and one of the insights I had just from today, thank you very much, was, was thinking that, um, that we also expect people to be people, except people behave differently in different contexts, I think. And so, and I don't know, Gil, how you've had this experience, but like when I was at, at EDF and we were doing corporate partnerships, and it was so clear that if you just had people who are environmentalists act like environmentalists at work, you could have dramatic changes in business, but you don't. Because at work there, they're work people. And at home, they're the home people, you know. And I feel like that's probably true of governances too, right? I'm gonna behave differently in different contexts of governance. Um, and so you don't get to even simplify me to being a person. I'm still multiple persons. And so anyway, it's it's I all, all this to say, I suppose it's a really complicated, interesting question. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Kevin, very happy to see you. Um Glad you reported in on the situation in Swannanoa last time I saw you on the Zoom, but how's how stuff? Well, you know, FEMA says that our community engagement is better than any they've seen. And that's really pretty interesting. And then there's a <clears throat> there's a lot of ignorant folks offering ignorant help. And we're, I'm trying to direct some of them to our county commissioner who knows the groups that know where the shut-ins are and those sorts of things or knows where the babies are uh, you know but there's lots of diapers on the highway kind of thing a really smart group is at something called world central kitchen and they're doing cooking everywhere and people say it's kind of like a burn it's really amazing there's they've got uh food and they've got um uh, uh starlinks and so uh I'm looking at that kind of thing and it's uh we're trying to get a little smarter about the allocation of resources and the and the distribution of resources. And so I was talking with, the, we've got a new master's in uh, applied climate science at Warren Wilson that I'm going to be working with. Uh, and, and it's different because they have, over the three, the two years, they have uh, three 12-day residencies that where they really work on projects. 
And we were already mapping out the, the new funds that are here for concessionary impact investing. And now we have to factor in relief because you can't really invest in an entrepreneur who can't open the doors, you know, and that, we don't have water yet in most of the places. And uh, oddly enough, they fixed the pipes now, but we have to wait for the water in the reservoir to settle to, in order to go into the processing. So we're just waiting on the water to settle. It's really pretty interesting. Sediment. Um, wow. Yeah. And it's, and it's an image that just came up in the chat. And it's like, no, yeah, that's actually really true. Um, and and there are people doing lots of disinformation, but FEMA has been really amazing here. Uh, we've had three or four different crews because we're 100 foot from the river. Well, we aren't. We're living in a a double wide, but we were, our house is, is back over there and, and we've, we've, we've beaten most of the mold in the walls. We aren't sure about the mold in the floor. That's what's working now. And, um, you know, governance, uh, the anarchists are doing a better job than, than our local government in a whole lot of ways. Uh, the World Central Kitchen has figured out a way to be useful and helpful everywhere, insinuating it into lots of little groups. The Baptist Church in Swannanoa was doing really great, massive um, delivery of water and stuff. And then they, the pastor is a good guy, passed it off to somebody and they're doing a variety of things that could be just Jesus loves me sometimes, and it could be a mini sermon sometimes. And so people are, but the county has not figured out a way to get there because there's no uh, public land um, that is, um, in Swannanoa that is really easily accessible the way the Baptist church has this massive parking lot. So it's a, it's a really interesting set of, of, of uh, interactions and things. Uh, the city is as dysfunctional as ever, but the county's pretty good. And, um, you know, we're looking at, uh, I've been doing uh, crowdfunding. Uh, there are a couple people on the list who are doing this, uh, given to this GoFundMe that I posted last time. And it's a, uh, a microgrid hub uh, that would, you know, give power and light the next time this happens. And uh, thank you, Mark. And thank you, uh, Stacy and some others. And uh, next to a Starlink. And so uh, I'm looking at uh, neighborhood scale resilience you know, that works when the public sector stuff doesn't work. And we have to be planning for public sector stuff not working. And, but it really becomes hyper local uh climate response is the thing that's really working well and so uh a lot of things around governance because the things that are sprouting up around government are better than what government is doing uh t-mobile has been amazing and they have centers where they're giving stuff away uh verizon has been the worst at&t has been second uh Google Fi has been good. It's I'm going to switch to T-Mobile as soon as I can, you know, their stores open, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it's, it's um, there'll be this pastiche of local government, community, neighborhood scale, like Grovemont uh, is a community in Swannanoa that was, they were organized the first day, but that's because they'd already done community suppers and that's where the public library is. And there's a park there. And so they knew where the old people were. They knew where the babies were. Everybody else had to find out where, but our, our registrar of deeds has done an amazing thing. He's got all the property up online and there were 800 volunteers going to say, are you okay? Are you not okay? They came to us and we said, we're okay. And these five houses that we work with are okay. And so, you know, there's these pieces of infrastructure that if you want to say, how do you keep that going after the, uh, after there's water, I mean, everything, you know, we, lots of places have, have power now and connectivity and we're still sharing because we don't share because we have to share water, find ways to share water. And when we don't have it, something that when we don't feel the scarcity, you know, what, what keeps the social capital going. I, I'm going to be working on that with the local college to figure out some of that stuff. Uh, and we got to, uh, I'm doing a, a, a a series of paid internships to them to figure out some of the some of the internship some of the the infrastructure and and mixing relief with with impact investment uh, on a local uh neighborhood scale resilience so it's uh luckily this new uh, 
this new department wants to figure out stuff I want to figure out. I'm going tomorrow uh, to a rights of nature uh, thing at uh, University of the South with, with our local group and the college to talk about our citizen engagement. And there are uh, four communities that are, have become river keepers and have filed uh, bills in the state Senate uh, to honor the rights of nature and make them legal. Because if you have, if you the rights of nature means you're in relationship na with nature, and therefore it's not a commodity to be extracted. And so it's a, and the indigenous folks are way out ahead of us, and they're actually, they, they, I'm talking to the Cherokee because, um, you know, as I mentioned, we, we have a village uh, site that no, is the only undefiled access, and now. With our farm being blasted away, uh, lots of silt means lots of river cane, and they want to uh, uh, harvest and tend that river cane. And they're following the Ojibwe, uh, who were the first to file uh, rights of nature as a tribe tied to their treaties, tied to fighting um, pipelines. And so uh, they're the they're the one the other tribes are following. And so, you know, we're learning to think like them. Right? And that's just how that is. So the, but there's governance. And some of the governance is just not gonna work. And some of it is learning to listen. Uh, there's this one state representative who told me there would be a quote, concerted effort for Swan and Oa. And I kept on saying, where? It is not. You are not. And she said, well, it's logistics. Like, no, it's not. It, there, you, you could be at the middle school. I mean, don't tell an active citizen there will be a concerted effort in the most devastated part of the county and not fucking come through. I'm in relationship with all the other state representatives and, and, and uh, county commissioners. But, you know, you just don't say there's going to be a concerted effort because you believe there should be, you know, the. The, the unpleasant word for her is is she did not come through and I will not say other. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> governance is really, really fluid and, and got new layers. And Kevin, I was just going to pick up and sort of say that uh, Sam, in some really interesting ways, Kevin is answering your question. And I think he's answering your question in a way that's very organic, emergent and messy and curvy instead of linear and uh, it, it involves being engaged before the crisis happens so that you know who, what, when, where, when the crisis happens and so that you have trust and can act quickly when the crisis happens, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of things here that are, that are all about governance. It's just that they're not layered elegantly. There's no, there's no architecture of decision-making here. There's a, there's a, an emergent process of, of make, you know, making decisions along the way somehow. Um, Kevin, thank you for, thank you both for coming back and reporting in what's going on, but also for ongoing. The work you've been doing is what's till, you know, turn the earth so that you can have these things happen in bad times. Yeah. <clears throat> none of the capital knows how the other capital fits together. And that's really a great opportunity for us. They're, they all know what their money mm -hmm. does. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, there was somebody ahead of Sam in the queue that either fell out of the queue or dropped out of the queue. I don't know, but I, uh, if you wanted to speak up, I don't, I've forgotten who it was. I think it, it was Stacy, then me, but I'm not sure. Okay. But uh, Sam, thought... Sam is worthy of going um, oh, for, taking for my place. Sure. For sure. I, I just saw somebody ahead of Sam for a while who then fell out. So uh, Sam, the floor is yours. I just dropped myself out of the queue and put myself in the end there. I don't know. But um, since you already introduced, uh, it's just a lot of, um feeling, just going to be honest, feeling a little bit of like frustration, disappointment, you know, which you all can probably imagine. Um, I'm, um, you know, I'm feeling a lot of, um, what's the word looking for? I feel a lot of pressure. You know, I have children, I have small children and, um, and, you know, um, I, I want to find solutions. I want to like, you know, move towards directions that seem like someone said things that we can do rather than things that we can't, things that we can affect rather than things we can't. And, and so, you know, that's, you know, um, to me, what a lot of this sounds like is, hey, this is too big of a problem, or hey, um, it's too convoluted or too messy to really kind of like actually try and pose any actual solutions or any processes or anything. 
I didn't or hear that. I didn't hear that set. um that's what i heard I'm, I'm, that's how i internalized Yeah. it so maybe that's not exactly what was said but that's what it translated to me in my Cool. That's cool. um and so that's that's just uh you know that's that's just me being honest um and you know there's a lot of things i'd like to say i mean like giving nature voting powers like i love this you know um how how do we do that you know i've thought a lot about that Like one strange paradoxical way is we could say um, if we had a liquid democracy thing where everybody had an actual vote and the ability to actually like um, contribute ideas and and um, and sense make with each other, um, there could be you could paradoxically give an AI the mantle of your river, you know, or your mountain or your forest and say, give it the right, you know, or you could have a person do it to say, because obviously the river is not going to come in and meet with people, but obviously it has to be some entity that can communicate with humans. So far we have humans and AI, right? So it has to be one of those that actually represents nature. Obviously, you know, when you're dealing with people who, um, you know, have um, children and, and plans and goals and, you know, and they want to take that little paper cut out of nature you know, because it'll mean so much to them to cut that tree or that forest. And it won't mean that much in the big term, that one tree or that one resource that they take. But everybody doing those little paper cuts, um, you know, you need governance to manage that. You need, you need ways of deciding what paper cuts can nature take and which ones can't it, you know? And so, um, and so we need, a, so, um, you know so having a system where you know you actually give a voice to nature somebody would have to do that or an ai would have to do it right so just an interesting thought um for me anyway um and so you that you kind of get into the realm of, of ai mediation as stacy was talking about um and you know because we have to decide everybody wants you know a nice house everybody wants what they want and all that means that all means extraction You know, everybody's everybody here's wearing nice clothes. Everybody here's got a you know nice wooden thing behind them or whatever. That's all nature. That's all being sucked out of, you know, my, myself included. So, and so we have to, um, you know, plastic and everything else. So, um, so at some point we have to. But these are all multipolar traps. These are all situations where, you know, because one person's doing it, everybody has to do it. You know, it, you know, if I don't look nice, then people aren't going to respect me, and you know, whatever. So. Um, if I had a weird, you know, skin on with some raw fur and stuff and like people would be like, okay, not sure about this guy, you know? And, um, and so what, what governance is to me is how to bind multipolar traps. It's how to make decisions coordinate together around situations that we could all fall into. And we all have fallen into, you know, um, it takes a lot to undo the thing that if one person does, everybody has to do it too. And it takes a lot of coordination to, to, to manage that. And so, um, so to me, that's, that's kind of the heart of it. And um, so um, the way I would like to do this is to um, my vote or whatever it is, <laughs> is to my proposal, my uh, um, is to kind of like start throwing ideas out there. Like let's make a list of, models of what what this could look like what a, what a like this is part of the conversation was like actually the topic that we decided on uh, for this conversation was um i believe maybe i'm wrong actually let me back up but i think it was um envisioning a governance system oops sorry uh am i here still yeah, yeah envisioning fine. a yep. governance We're hearing system you. no problem that could work And um, kind of like, um, you know, so we have to start somewhere to do that. We have to start with like a baseline, some baselines and, and kind of like start somewhere, just start somewhere. You can't just throw up your hands and say, it's ah, it's just so intertwined and jumbled. And, you know, we have to say like, okay, what's a kind of a base model? And I'm going to propose liquid democracy because that's where I've come to. And we can start somewhere else. Happy to, if someone else has another idea, we could talk. Actually, I'd be just as happy to talk about um governance councils so like a citizen 
councils. That's really a hot topic these days. So councils where random people are thrown together to deal with situations. Um, we could start with that and we can just start to say, okay, how would that work practically? Um, and so um, I'm happy to do that if that's where the energy is, if that's what people care about, happy to do that. Um, and, but I would say like, why don't we just start with a model and start to shoot it down, start to see where it doesn't work and where it does work and start to, um, cause this is the topic, right? Envisioning. So let's, let's start with some visions and start to, um, kind of just play with it, you know, like, let's have some fun and like, like think about what it could look like. Um, so that's my proposal. And, um, I have to, jump for one second and I'll be right back. Oh shoot. Okay. Um I'll wait I'll wait until Sam comes back to see what I was going to say to Sam then. Um we have a lot of hands in the queue. So let me just go straight to Stacy. Okay. Three things. One um to Kevin and thank you and so, so glad that you're here. Um so I've been having um a lot of very spiritually rooted conversations about what's been going on. And for me, I see this real clear learning opportunity, which is playing out in terms of the way things are coming together. So I just wanted to say that because I think, you know, that's the silver lining here. Um, the second thing, and maybe Stuart can help me to use the right language. So I want to give an example. I had been in a conversation, argument, debate with a very respected, renowned systems thinker. And so the two different arguments and he did not understand what I was saying, thought it was nonsensical, made no sense. And I said, let's feed it to the AI and see what comes out. And the AI totally agreed with everything that I said. Had I not had the AI on my side, I would have lost that argument. So what is the word, if not arbitrator, that I would use? Because that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a neutral being that weighs in with a logical, unbiased opinion. What is that word that I should use? And then the last thing I want to say has to do with community building and a conversation that I had had with Sam and a way in which we might be able to tie all this in. So I'll leave that for another time. Uh, and Stacey, I think you're finding yourself defending the use of AI in a specific thing. There's a really interesting question here about what is the appropriate role for generative AI in everything we're talking about. And I think we should calmly walk into that. That's its own large discussion. Uh, and you, I think you've gotten st stuck trying defending something that seems reasonable to me, but might not be reasonable to everybody. And that that it's losing the power of what you're actually, I think, saying, which is like, hey, there's a there's a real useful tool here that could help us uh, in some settings uh, around governance at lots and lots of different levels. So thank you for bringing that in. Cool. Uh, Mr. Carranza. Okay. <laughs> now, directly, Stacy, I am a UI developer, user interface. It was an interface between one person and another called language. Now, chat GPT is a language model. It's a statistical language model. Doesn't agree doesn't disagree, just spits out what is probable based on the pre-existing corpus and its training. There's many different ways to train. There's many different corpuses that can be the input of an AI system. These systems are all different. You go to one AI, you get one answer. You go to another AI, you, got AI, you get a different answer. That's a medium of thinking, a medium of communication. It's called semiotics. How an idea becomes meaningful. Language is just tokens. 
They have to be used in the right way. They have to get to the right people at the right time for the right purpose. That's not an AI's job. It's a person's job. You know, Stanford, not Stanford White, Harrison White um, wrote a book, Identity and Control. What does that sound like, Kalia? What does that sound like, Sam? Now, everybody has multiple identities. I don't have the same identity with my dead mom that I do with my live mom. I don't have the same identity with my friend Tim than I do with my mother. I don't have the same identity when I go for a consulting job than I do with my friend Bill. We all have so many different identities and we have interfaces inside ourselves and with others. And those interfaces are language. Those interfaces are video. Those interfaces are AIs. Now, my main man and my main woman, Gregory Bateson and Mary Catherine Bateson, wrote a book about the epistemology of the sacred. Gil knows that book. Everybody needs to read that book. Mark out. Thank you, Mark. Gil. Uh, yeah, let me unwind a few threads uh, here. Thank you, Mark, for that. Um, Kevin, I mean, if you're still here, you are still here. Thank you so much for being well um, and for sharing what's going on in Swanona, Swanona without the MAGA bullshit filters on the story um, and for um, reminding us that... Um, that it comes out of community and relationship. And by the way, side note, if you're not in touch with Rebecca Solnit, I encourage you to be. Uh, she did a remarkable book some years ago called The Paradise Built in Hell about community response to the Northern California fires. And I think she'd relish hearing about your stories. She is, in my mind, one of the more remarkable writers and storytellers working today. So I would encourage the two of you to talk and I'm happy to make info um, if that would be helpful. Um, um, and I'm very moved by the story of the Ojibwe looking at the storm and the flood and the silt and the river cane and seeing the pattern that I never would have imagined that they live in that pattern. Um, which goes to some of what this conversation is about. David, uh, you were talking about um, uh, police, 18,000 police forces and how that's irrational a certain way because they're competing and not coordinating. But of course, that's living systems principles, right? That's kind of how it is. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, our quest for, you know, for, 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 for rationalization may be very antithetical to living systems principles, which kind of shake things out through the ruckus and turmoil of stuff. <laughs> um, you talked about... Um, environmental people in, in corporate roles and the challenge of dancing both of those worlds. And um, Mark's mention of Gregory Bateson reminds me of this. You know, there's the, there's the argument about whether corporations are people um, and, um, you know, that legal fiction that got thrust on us 150 years ago that we're still struggling with. Um, and there's folks who say, no, corporations aren't people. Corporations are collections of people. And Gregory astutely pointed out, no, they're collections of parts of people. Uh, and Flores takes it further and says, no, they're not even that. They are they are networks of conversations and commitments between people. And I find that to be a very rich place to start the exploration from. That who we are, what we are, what we be is the, the conversations we have with each other, the requests and promises we make to each other, of each other, the commitments we have. And so if we think about networks of conversations and networks of commitments... <clears throat> All right. It gives me an array that I that for me is useful in orienting to this conversation. We talk because we're 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 mashing together a bunch of words that are rather different but are related to each other. Government is one thing. Governance is a different kind of category. Government is one form of governance. Um, governance is a form of coordination, and that that I think might be the fundamental thing we're talking about here is how do people coordinate in the world? How do people live together and do stuff together in the world? Um, 
And um, I've had a beef for a long time with Norbert Wiener, who wrote the book Cybernetics, what, 1948 or something like that, which was subtitled. Um, um, the Humane Use of Human Beings. No, no, that's later. The, the that's cybernetics later. was subtitled. Command and Control uh, in... Animal and Machine. Animals Thank you. and Machines. Yep, yeah, sorry about that. Here it is. Exactly that. And it struck me a long time ago that it's not command and control, it's command and coordination. Control is a subset of coordination. It's one kind of coordination, but it's not the go the governing, if you will, principle there. It's about coordination, and coordination is a function of relationship, which Kevin has told us the story of very beautifully. And relationship is related to being, which Stuart talked about at the top of the call. So I'm sort of listening to this whole conversation. I, I hesitate to call it a stack because that's more, you know, it's too structured and mechanical, but a a pattern. Um, traversing government and governance and coordination and relationship and being. And so that's, for me, is interesting territory. Throwing out a lot of ideas about governments is not interesting to me. And if that's where the conversation is going to go, I'll probably come back in a month or two, because that just doesn't feel like it has the juice for me that this more primal thing does. And on the, um, and last but not least, um, um, Stacy, I've been having fun with AIs also. I've built a couple based on my life and work and corpus and uh, thinking um, that I'm experimenting with out in the world and privately. Um, the uh, I've seen some people do very fascinating things of, of off of inviting the AI to have a conversation between two different voices, like you know, you know, uh, like Lex Friedman and Aristotle talk and watch what happens. That's kind of cool. But arbiter, absolutely not. Uh, you know, uh, opinion, collection of synthesis of various opinions and perspectives, maybe so. And to Mark's point, I think what's really critical here is not just what the AIs are trained on, but what they're not trained on. And the generative AIs that we're living with now are mostly trained on the Western canon. Uh, they are not built on indigenous literature to the extent there is indigenous literature i'm trying to find out while we're talking if it's even trained on on like you know on the 3500 year body of of of, uh, of of jewish culture and civilization i mean mark you know if the talmud is in chat gpt and so i'd be surprised uh, if it wasn't i'd be surprised shocked. If, surprised I'd if it be, wasn't yeah i'd be shocked if these the, if, if uh, the talmud and talmudic commentaries have not been fed into the mall right well are they in aramaic are they in greek are they in english yeah. who knows and, uh, and, and exactly you know what's where's the where's the I Ching? okay i'm not going to interrupt anymore but where is the I Ching in ai no, so where's all that stuff and if and if and if it is trained on the talmud is it yes exactly is it trained on an english translation whose translation done when in which form i spend every week in deep text study in Torah. Uh, and one of the things that's very clear is that this is built on a language that is intrinsically ambiguous. <laughs> Torah is written without vowels. The vowels are provided by the reader. Which vowels you provide can change the meaning. How you read the ambiguities in the text of a word that can mean 15 different things changes the meaning. And that's part of the fun we have with this, of exploring layers and layers and layers. I guarantee you that that's not in how GPT is approaching Talmud, at least not yet. It could, could go in interesting places, but there's something about interaction with the text of living human beings in relationship that's different than trying to distill something out of the text as a collection of stochastic bits. And um, so I'm fascinated by AI and very cautious about it because for me, it comes down to fundamentally, AIs don't care and they can't. And humans do and can't not. And that may be at bottom the discerning differential between these things. It's still very useful tool set. Uh, but I want to I always want to keep that in mind. Last reference on this, Stuart Dreyfus, uh, uh, Her Hubert Dreyfus, late emeritus at Cal, wrote a book 30 years ago, 40 years ago called Why Computers Can't Think. Or what computers can't do. What was it, Mark? One of those. What computers, what computers, can't, computers can't think, and and, and, then, and there are multiple like, multiple editions of that as well. And another one later, like ten years later, called "Why Computers Still Can't Think." Exactly, they do something very interesting and very useful, 
but they don't do what we do. Um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, Gil, two things. Uh, well, one thing is we seem to be overlaying a complex philosophical discussion about what AIs do and can't do into this other interesting topic, which is sort of too bad because I, I kind of want us to stick to the governance thing as much as we can rather than kind of... Uh, the, the, uh, the, well, the overlay is really important, Jerry, if I can interrupt for a second. Oh, I, think, I think there's a deeper conversation to have in that territory, but it's messing up our, our other conversation, which is what I wanted to ask you about. Um, I, I, I want to say that it's not messing it up for two particular reasons. One is that Stacy talked about possibility of AI's role in governance. And so I'm raising a yellow flag on that for the reasons I said. Yes, that, which, which, feels, which felt a little bit like mansplaining back to Stacy because mm -hmm. um, Stacy was just saying, hey, it feels like an arbiter role. Let, you know, and kind of let's talk about this later in some depth. And she's had four different people push back on the idea in, in different ways that are not exciting me. I would basically yeah. say that Sam's idea is about AI and governance. Mm. And I agree with Stacy. Yes. That it, AI is an important way to check out how one's writing is interpreted. Mm -hmm. AI is an important resource I, to check I, out how Sam's idea is interpreted by machines. But it comes back to what people decide and you know i don't want to editorialize but but i disagree with you jerry i think we're right on topic and stacy asked for help here in defining this and that's what i think everybody has done it didn't feel like help it felt like pushback on <laughs> stacy and i'll let stacy i'll let stacy report in on this but it felt all like put like no stacy you're wrong it's not that no. <laughs> stacy did stacy tell us how stacy feels instead of yeah. telling us how stacy feels what, Je what Jerry said was accurate. Stacy had to phrase her her opinion in the form of a question in, in order to feel heard. Um, Gil, what I put in the chat was that the AI, I believe, could help you to see where you may be biased in your own writing, which That's is cool. parallel to what I was trying to say could be used, which Mark pointed out. So thank you all. We're all clear now. Thanks, Stacy. Let me thank let me you. go let me go back to a piece. Uh, Gil, I was I was going to roll back to the thing you said before you came into the AI conversation, yeah. which was here's the thing I'm really interested in is the intersection of these kinds of things, which I liked a lot. If you could um, frame that for us for maybe next week's conversation. I would appreciate that because I think that, that, and if you and Sam could figure out how that blends, and I don't know if that's possible, but that would be, I think, a good place to go in next week. Let and and I'm not sure. Um, we can also we can also bookmark the AI conversation as well. But uh, in, pardon, um, isn't next week a check-in? No, we are uh, we are in a, a temporary uh, uh, new air traffic pattern of check-ins are the first. Uh, Thursday of every month only. So we, we've got three weeks worth of conversation to do. I'm at a conference next Thursday, so I, I'll have to pass on that when I can okay. come back. But, but I would appreciate your, your articulating the thing you said and bringing it back into the group in, in some form, maybe just on the OGM list. But uh, I liked what you were, what you were saying there. Um, cool. Uh, that was a lot. We've gone, we've gone at high speed through many, many different things. Uh, Sam, I'm curious um it felt to me like kevin was actually reporting on actual working stuff that would excite you and you were really disappointed and i'm i'm, I'm very happy you uh, trust this group enough to say hey i'm really kind of like disappointed here um but i'm trying to figure out how we can be talking around these things in a way that winds up being useful to you because it feels to me like if you were serving kevin with a platform that helps him, and this is a very narrow way of looking at it, but if what you were building served him really well, that might actually be a path to a great solution for a platform that works. And I'm not sure at all what Kevin needs or wants or how this would materialize, but he was describing a high, at this point, a high functioning set of overlapping and messy things that felt like self-governance rising up and, and like saying, hey, everybody, we're good here. Um, we could use some help and and we need to restructure how the help shows up and blah, 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 blah. Um, so so I, I don't know. I saw a lot of promise in the intersection that 
that I'm feeling is we might miss if we sort of drive by. Um, cool. And with that, uh, I'll go to Pete, who's next in the queue, and I'll I'll put uh, Stuart's uh, Gil's friend Gil's hand down. Uh, uh, thanks, Jay, and thanks everybody. It's been a great conversation. Um, I I have a thing to say, and then I have two things, two replies in front of that. So let me do the reply things first. Um, uh, I'm also going to put them in the chat because I've had it long enough to kind of compose my thoughts that they're in text. Um, but I also don't want to just do it in chat. Um, uh, Sam, I, I empathize. Uh, I hear you say, let's actually do something. <laughs> and then we kind of like meandered off of doing something into some other space. Uh, that is the nature of this group. I think we're a, a philosophy salon, uh, not uh, an action network. Um, that's not to say that there aren't parts of OGM that are not action networks. We, we have a number of places where we do act. Um, this is certainly not it. Um, uh, and then the, the big question, I, I, I think what I heard from you um, is, hey, let's set up a, a, a governance system and actually do some governance and get, get feedback. Um, the question for me then is what would we govern? What would we decide, be deciding about? And is that something important enough for us to decide to have a governance system? Um, I think I, I have similar inquiries uh, in OGM related spaces uh, like FJB or Massive Wiki or things like that where I'm doing action research um, and I would love for people to come do more with me. Um, it's just not this, uh, not this container. Um, so then, uh, I've got, I've got <laughs> an AI observation. Um, I feel like, uh, I, I think you're, uh, Jerry, I think you're wrong. Respectfully, I think you're wrong. Uh, I think actually the question of whether or not, uh, AI is, a, a, an aid or a hindrance or whatever, or both, uh, to govern this is actually a really important topic. Um, I'm certainly willing to leave it for some other time, and I don't want this. I I don't want this to be a, a discussion about AI. Um, I put in chat the thing I wrote up about what I think AI is and isn't. Um, I think it's really important to think about what AI is and isn't when we say, "Can it do this? Can it do that?" I think I'm not mansplaining. If I am, I apologize. Um, and then, lastly, the thing to me, I I sent an email to the um, to the list this morning because it you know popped up in my reading queue. Eleanor Connick is uh, somebody I respect a great deal because of her work in the Obsidian community, actually. Um, but it turns out that she's got a, a fairly deep interest in uh, sociology and and weird ancient history. And so, reading the the one post, she gives like two great um, you know. Uh, uh, legal system is very different from ours and unusual governments to take inspiration from is like, wow, <laughs> we're having this narrow discussion about kinds of governance and things like that. And there's, to, to me, governance, you know, thinking through it during this call, actually governance kind of, kinds of sit on, sits on top of social structures. And she kind of just easily goes through, here's a bunch of different social structures that, that humans do now and, you know, in the recent past, that's very different from our social structure and, where we can govern from. And she goes down to the depth of kind of evolutionary bi biology. Um, uh, here's why fe female chimpanzees get beaten up by young male chimpanzees and why those are the ones they mate with most um, uh, because uh, they want kids who are gonna be protected by violent males um, and they want strong kids um, like the ones that are beating them up. And that's like just a uh, abhorrent kind of thing to throw into our society, but that kind of evolutionary biology and uh, success, uh, success strategies go down to the level of uh, evolutionary biology and then you know, up a level, up a, a number of levels to social structures and then up more levels to governance and things. It's not, you know, when we say it doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem right, it doesn't seem logical, it doesn't seem rational, it's, it's not nice, um, it's abhorrent. You know, it, sometimes those things work. Um, so I understand, I, I hope, I think, and I hope that we're all in inquiry, how can we, how can we be better humans and how can we uh, take the best of kind of, you know, our substrata 
um, and how can we kind of avoid the worst? How can we bend towards justice and fairness and equity and things like that, things that, that we think are nice? But it's not, it's not something that you can kind of legislate at the very top of it. You know, it's a whole stack of things that make us act the way that we do. Um, and, uh, and you kind of have to, you know, you have to take account of a lot of that stuff. Um, so that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. And um, just, I think that the AI question is incredibly important to talk about. I just think it was muddying the waters here uh, in what we were trying to, to get toward. And I want to make room for that conversation because I think is, this group knows a lot about it. Um, and also the resources you just shared with us, uh, Eleanor uh, Connick's uh, stuff is looks fabulous. So thank you for that as well. Um, I think one of our strengths is how many things are in our in our nets and in our on our radars and that we share them avidly uh, and uh, you know that that helps us weave what we each think and how we think collectively, which I is one of the joys of these calls for me. So thank you for that. Uh, Jose. Um, so it's it's funny. I put my hand up and then Gil jumped in with um, pretty much the the line of thinking that I was gonna bring up and then Pete sort of doubled down on some of that. Um, we keep talking about living systems. Living systems don't have governance. Living systems have self-regulation. And when we think about self-regulation, we think about, well, there's both the system's needs and the environment. Uh, so speaking to what um, Stuart said earlier, being and doing, we only get feedback when we interact with the environment and the structure of the environment gives us the, the feedback that we have to adapt to. And it's, a, it's an interplay. It's not one or the other. And so how do we self-regulate, not from a place of um, thinking about control, because we've gotten, I think, in as a society into this place where it's like, we need to control ourselves because we're all bad, right? We're, uh, we're broken, we're, you know, human nature is bad, all of that stuff. Is human nature bad? Or do we have environments where, because we're trying to control people's behavior, because we've created environments that are not healthy for human systems, that those systems then uh, rebel as, as part of its self-regulation. There's enough evidence from what I've understood to show that you generationally live in, a, in an environment that's not safe, that doesn't have enough food, that doesn't have enough security, and so on and so forth. Your children are going to uh, you know, grow up to have a very different behavioral pattern than kids who are growing up, who are born into a, a safe environment. And so that relationship between us and our environment is essential. Are we thinking about governance as a thing we do to control? We vote, we decide, and those other people need to then follow the rules? Or are we thinking about governance as a, as a way to understand how life itself self-regulates? And self if we really believe in living systems, we can't start thinking, we can't start thinking about governance, in my opinion. We have to think about self-regulation and, and that aspect of living systems is a very different way to start that conversation. To me, we keep sort of jumping that and start talking about how we control. And, and that for me is kind of, this conversation always brings me back to that question. How do we start at self-regulation? Um, Thanks. Jose, I love that. And you're reminding me of things like quorum sensing in flocks and herds where 
you know, why is it that a bunch of geese suddenly get up and start flying south or that the herd suddenly migrates from this pasture or whatever else? And that there's a bunch of things going on, including the lead uh, animal uh, sort of guiding and, 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 and so forth. But there's this sense of, of some collective decision gets made uh, that is not, you know, and, and I think that humming in IETF meetings may play that kind of role of being a subtle signal uh, that, that is different from, okay, everybody, like, hold up your hand. I'll note that the country of Australia failed to pass giving Aboriginals a voice, a voice. There was a huge push to try to do that. And at the end, there was this big backlash with a lot of money spent on freaking misinformation, probably, I don't know. But it pisses me off that Australia tried to vote to give Aborigines a voice and failed. But Jerry, I wouldn't consider that a decision. Animals don't make decisions. Yeah. Animals yeah. respond to the environment internally so, and externally. So at and some it, moment, the the the, the, the response got, got up and flew. They they responded. It's a to response. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, agreed. Agreed. They didn't all go. Okay. Good. Now we're flying to Antarctica. Yeah. Let's decide whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. It's it's time. I'm good. Um. Thanks, Stuart. And we're getting very close to the end of our call. And Mr. Homer is off in Italy uh, scouting locations to retire. And I miss his presence because I miss his poems at the end. But anyway, uh, Stuart, please. <laughs> I might have a poem. Excellent. So, um, God, we keep opening loops, OK? We keep opening loops. Um, <clears throat> and I. I can't even recall the loop that um, that Jose <coughs> just opened. Um, but it was about self-governance and about, um, you know, what came to mind was, was you know, one of my teacher's great books, uh, thought revolutionary at the time, Meg Wheatley's Leadership in the New Science. Um, and unfortunately, Meg continued to travel around the world and just concluded that we're fucked because all the vectors are heading in the wrong direction. Now, what I have to say about that is the important distinction between the geese flying and our human being and the way we've been programmed. And they are antithetical to each other. The geese don't do an economic analysis of what it is that they're doing, okay? They don't run it through that filter at all. They're just acting on um, instinct based upon their own internal living systems and what's driving them. And we have created this strange um, economic um, uh, um, structure, right? Um, number two, what popped up, Stacy, in my mind was, let's consult the Oracle. It's like the eight ball. <laughs> it's like, you know, information. Just lots of information. There's not wisdom there. That's the human piece. But lots of information um, for human beings to process. Um, Mark, you mentioned earlier, everybody should read this book. Yeah, should. But people ain't going to read the book. So it's a question of designing programs that will impart that wisdom the teaching and the learning that needs to happen in terms of shifts of consciousness. Now, let me say something about shifts of consciousness. Shorthand, okay, for building culture. Shorthand for building culture. Culture, I think we would all agree, is held in um, the relationships in any organization, in any subdivision. Culture is held in and by relationships. And in a very simple term, relationships are a reflection of, of um, articulated and intuitive senses of how we will be with each other, or things that are explicit and things that are implicit, how we will be with each other. That's kind of the being piece as, as a fundamental piece. And we need to, I believe, um, be more explicit about choosing ways of um, 
being with each other. Um, thanks to the reference to cybernetics, uh, the first book I ever bought, I remember having to go to my father as a senior in high school and ask him to write the check to buy Maxwell Maltz's Psycho Cybernetics. I think Great. that no doubt <laughs> rings a bell for anyone. Um, I think that that's, oh yeah, the one last thing, um, Sam, I think it's Im important is um, what you're pointing to and is the Neo book concept um, of this group. I just got a little uh, impatient, but I have what I think is a perfect structure for a Neo book in terms of looking for input from others, because there's a lot of expertise out there that can fill in the blanks for areas I know need attention, but I don't have the expertise. And I just think that that would be a wonderful way to, to think about and structure the whole notion of, of um, what we're talking about. Governance. Mm -hmm. What to leave in, what to leave out. What's essential, what's not so essential. That's all. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, Mark. I would like to give Kevin the last word, but I have a short poem from Emily Dickinson, which I will read in the style of Bullwinkle the Moose. Oh, perfect. That a fuzzy perfect. fellow without feet, yet doth exceeding run. Of velvet is his countenance, and of his complexion done. Sometimes he dwelleth in the grass, sometimes upon a bell, from which he doth descend in plush upon the passerby. All this in summer, but when winds alarm the forest folk, he taketh damask residence and struts in sewing silk. Then, finer than a lady emerges in the spring, a feathering on each shoulder, you'd scarce recognize him. By men, eclipsed caterpillar, by me, but who am I to tell the pretty secret of the butterfly? Rollwinkle, thank you. That was, that was awesome. Uh, Kevin, I think you'll have the last word today. Yeah, I posted in the chat <clears throat> what I posted uh, on Facebook as a response to this thing on governance with some other layering of which neighborhoods uh, worked best. Uh, Grovemont really stands out the more I think about them because they have a library that we've been fighting to uh, keep surviving and they've done community dinners at their park. And so they knew where the old folks were and they knew where the people needed diapers. Whereas down on the highway, they're giving out diapers randomly and they're giving out water and they're, they don't know how to distribute to the people in need because there were no social connections ahead of time. I got told by one state representative that there would be a quote concerted effort uh, in for the county in Swannanoa, and there never was. Whereas my county commissioner, when somebody was bringing in trucks and they reached out to me, I said, "Talk to Terry," because and she said, you know, "Give it to Grovemont first because they know where things go." And so, you know, if you if you have the social connections ahead of time, then you know where the old folks are and where the people with diapers are. But then the other thing that World Central Kitchen is a mystery because they've been everywhere and they've been loved by everyone. And Keith, who's the new, uh, it's really a different master's. It's an, apply, it's an applied uh, climate science uh, with projects that he wants to figure out what they did right that has a replicable model uh, that gets them welcome in redneck neighborhoods that are purely Trump and in little lefty enclaves everywhere. And they've got something that is really working that is different than any other group that's come in. Uh, lots of folks that come in are just diapers on the highway shit, you know? And other, so I don't know. Uh, Social connections ahead of time matter, but uh, World Central Kitchen doesn't have those, and they do what other folks don't do. So that's two things to explore. Um, they're, 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 how does somebody from outside do it right all the time? 
what method and how do places become the place where you know your neighbor ahead of time, which cuts your disaster response time. So, and then how does somebody in official power piss a, a, an involved citizen off by promising something she had no understanding that she couldn't deliver? And she just tried to make it logistics. And it's like, no, you know, you, you can't say you're going to do that and then do nothing and blame it on logistics. So anyway, some elected officials are doing really well. And one did really terribly. And I'm a little obsessed with her. But anyway, everybody else did did well, really. So thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, a lot. Uh, Stuart, did you have a poem you would like to share with us? Uh, sure. I just put it in chat and, um, oh, okay. but, but it's essentially, and I'll, 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 I'll run through it quickly. It's Please. essentially a poem about how we're programmed and how we need to step beyond our own programming. It's in the context of parents. And in some sense, um, I chose today's date for this poem because, um, it's my parents' anniversary. And um, my mom died um, about a month before their 70th anniversary, <laughs> mm. which is just amazing. Source of essence, place where formed, learned habits, beliefs, observed yes. norms, on a course with their set of things programmed before we grew wings. Gracious thanks we owe them Without birthing, we'd have no kin. As we get older, awake and grow, we choose over beside our flow. They may resist our rebirthing, not ready to bless our emerging. <clears throat> That's when resolve is tested, honed, building character for when alone. Love them anyway. Don't let resistance in the way. Fear is their holy cross. They would rather still be boss. <laughs> Can you love, accept who they are? Honor their treasure, though from afar. Thank, acknowledge, foundation they gave. Let your quest continue. Seek all you crave. Thanks, Stuart, very much. I think I think we all need that level of reprogramming. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, thank you all for an awesome call. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll revisit this topic as elaborated on the chat and uh, list uh, next week and see where we can get to. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Jerry, can you stay on for a minute? Uh, why don't you come back into the room? Let me shut everything down and then come back into the same room. Thank you. Perfect.